We have a story about the human seed, the DNA, but it's also about space. Space, 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 space. I'm gonna go to space. This That's is a pretty crazy <laughs> jingle. The sun.com. They get all the inside info. And, you know, you got to keep track of what they're tracking. Uh-huh, Brave yeah. New World inside plans for off world human DNA seed bank on moon so alien civilization could recreate us. Mm, good. This does sound like a priority. Mm hmm. SpaceX just launched a lot of human DNA to the International Space Station. The Crew-4 mission blasted off on April 27th, and part of the cargo was a biobank containing DNA from 500 different species. Sounds kind of like a Noah's Ark. Yeah. One of those species was humans, and there are now over 2,000 different DNA samples from lots of different people in space. A company called LifeShip is behind the DNA collection. It hopes to one day create an off-world genetic human seed bank on the moon. The idea is similar to the global seed vault we have on Earth. Wasn't that in Sweden or Iceland or Finland or Germany? Uh, there's one in Norway. Norway. There you go. Okay, yeah. I would have gotten there eventually. The yeah. global seed you vault... You were close. You were so close. <laughs> scouring around that region. <laughs> the global seed vault has the capacity to hold 4.5 million seed samples. If there happened to be a global catastrophe and a lot of life on Earth was destroyed, the global seed vault could help humans grow plants again or help a species come back from the brink of extinction. And remember we just reported, and I guess it got canceled, well, maybe it wasn't the episode that got canceled by YouTube, but we just reported about how Jennifer Doudna, one of the co-founders of the CRISPR technology, basically said, hey, I'm not closed off to genetically engineering humans or babies we just haven't had like a really good argument you know for why we should do it and the technology is not really great yet and then all the all of a sudden we have all these different stories that are like oh you know crispr and all kinds of weird dna stuff that we can potentially have issues with uh because you know if there is a catastrophe well a great way to speed up the process of you know maybe re repopulating the earth would be to use some crispr tech so um Okay, if there happened to be a global catastrophe and, the, and a lot of life on Earth was destroyed, the global seed vault could help humans grow plants again or help a species come back from the brink of extinction. LifeShip aims to do a similar thing, but with humans and other animals. Its Life website ship. states, quote, At LifeShip, we believe that humanity has an important part to play in continuing the cycle of life in the universe and expanding life outwards from our planet. Uh, we believe in preserving the genetic blueprint of Earth's incredible biodiversity as it is today for future generations. We believe in furthering the human story into the cosmos so that mm. we leave a legacy and are never forgotten. We believe that we can achieve this by taking small steps towards seeding life beyond Earth and extending humanity to the stars. Sending human DNA to the ISS was just a, quote, demonstration mission. The plan is for human DNA to be sent to the moon in 2023. LifeShip wants a genetic time capsule to be put on the moon's surface during NASA's Astrobotic Lunar land, Lander Mission. I wonder if they're going to mingle these seeds. There's going to be a Genesis 6 situation on the moon. Where mm, they the say, tardigrades they, will get in there. The, <laughs> the, the seeds of the heavenly creatures saw the daughters <laughs> of tardigrades that they were fair. The Nephilim tardigrades. <laughs> the Nephilim tardigrades on the moon. Uh, the company isn't 100% sure what will happen to human DNA in the distant future. Its website says, quote, because the genetic time capsule was designed for the far future, none of us will ever actually know for sure. Perhaps it will be found by a future civilization and used to recreate our planet as it is today. Our descendants could carry your code to the stars to seed a brand new world. While this is all theoretical, we believe it is worth saving our genetic blueprints of life on Earth for generations. Uh, LifeShip is still inviting humans to send over their DNA for future missions. You can sign up to send your DNA on its website. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Great that idea. Data, this is a marketing ploy for uh -huh. more uh, DNA data collection. 
Well, see, it's pretty genius because it is sort of this idea that like, oh, we're doing this as a service to humanity mm -hmm. to make ourselves a legacy among the stars. This is just a corporation. This is a private corporation <laughs> getting your DNA and paying another private corporation, which is uh, SpaceX. They're just buying a ticket for a little capsule. <laughs> And then they're just going to drop the capsule off, probably kick it off the side of the the, the robo uh, cruiser or whatever, and that's it. Uh, but not before they sort of uh, document it and computerize your DNA and sell it to China or something. <laughs> it's just a, it's a more crafty uh, DNA harvesting scheme than like 23andMe or whatever. Yeah, it's way more. A lot easier, too. You don't have to deliver anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's way more cosmic and messaging. And mm -hmm. appealing you just, to you film, uh, you kind of do a you know, go to the moon basement, the, the moon landing film set, right? Uh, film a robot dropping off a little canister or whatever, and be like, Yeah, your, your seed's in there, bro. Thanks for the $800 <laughs> and um, all your data that we'll make yeah. millions off of. <laughs> it's a good scheme, it's a really good scheme. Uh, do you think they'll ever have any kind of vault up yeah. there? I think they absolutely will. Or um, have it's already? The, it's the sort of technocratic transhumanist dream, really. I mean, it's, it is the... So you look back into the scriptures, you know, in the ancient Hebrew um, uh, society, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there are some rabbinical teachings that, you know, uh, everlasting life is really kind of life through your lineage, you know, mm -hmm. like your right, right, your sons right. and your sons' sons and yourself. Like that is the the sort of uh, eternal life thought of in in and the it, tree analogy. In some and rabbinical, um, you know, Hebrew uh, interpretations teachings. and teachings, yeah. yeah, interpretations rather, yeah. And uh, and it's interesting because it lines up in a in an interesting way with this sort of technocratic idea that is like yes your legacy eh, it, yeah it might be your genetic line on earth but also our legacy is our genetic line in the stars that's yeah. how we really reach the apotheosis and for the space skeptics you don't really need to have an outer space to do all this in, in terms of not, not just the, the, the DNA data collection. That's one level of it. But in terms of creating some kind of a recreation of uh, our civilization on some distant place, uh, that doesn't uh, that could be in some virtual metaverse, you know, <laughs> like take all that data definitely and could be that uh, reconstruct way too. our world as it was. And, and I'm sure in the future what they want to have is, hey, we're going to recreate the year 2025 and you can go to this metaverse cost a few bucks. But there you go. You're, you're in 2025. All the yeah. things. That all, the in there all the people in there are recreated right. from DNA that we got. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting too. The the Elon connection through yeah. SpaceX mm -hmm. is that's kind of how he talks about his son yeah. and his daughter. Remember, there's that uh, interview with Grimes. Mm -hmm. She's like, "Yes, oh, I will the way, train <laughs> the daughter. <laughs> Elon will train our son, and we will bring them to Mars, and we will live forever through their rulership of Mars." I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, that actually doesn't surprise me, but weird yeah. to actually hear you say it out loud. Well, Grimes was interviewed by Lex Friedman. I think it just published today. Oh, interesting. And they start off the, the episode, and, and basically Grimes says that we are becoming cyborgs, which is not surprising. Our brains are fundamentally changed with technology. I call us homo techno, essentially mm. a new species. It actually allows for evolution to take place. So Grimes said that? Grimes said that, yep. Yeah, she just made that up on the spot. Mm, yeah. It's not, it's not good <laughs> enough. <laughs> so she just was kind of just talking out loud, and <laughs> homo techno just came out. She's like, yeah, we'll go with that. That's homo fine. techno sounds good, because we're all connected. You are already sort of a cybernetic symbiote. Neural nets are taking over from regular programming. So you are connected.